All right, here at a foggy morning on Hobbs Farm. We're down in field four, finishing up a wheat harvest with Chris over there. What I'm doing is wind growing up our straw. Uh, got a little time while he's harvesting. It seemed like it would save us a lot of effort to uh, have fewer rows of straw to collect them. Later on, when we bring the class jaguar down here to collect things up, should have about half as many rows as uh, we're starting out with now. But yeah, I'm uh, doing the wind row, and then I'll uh, run over to the semi truck and empty Chris out for the last little bit of weed he's collecting here. In fact, after this row, I probably ought to run over there and check on things. Alright, looks like Chris has just maybe got uh, one more pass left over there, and he'll be done with the wheat harvest. I'm going to continue on and do another row of straw while uh, he's finishing that up. Then we'll kind of see where we stand on field four here. I do not think we're going to fill. Uh, three trailer loads. In fact, we'll be lucky to get one. So we have that second trailer attached to the New Holland there by the side of the field. I may just well leave that here to help with the straw collecting. See how it goes. Why waste the time to drive it back and forth? Speaking of collecting, we're going to uh, kind of do the same thing in that, uh, what is it, field 10 that the old fella owns and his helpers left him with a bunch of straw on the ground. We're almost ready once the guys get done with breakfast to go over there and uh, clean that up for them. Well, it's foggy enough out here. Even at 8 o'clock in the morning, I might, might as well turn the lights on. I haven't had a foggy morning like this here lately at Hobbs Farm. Let's have a look back here. That appears as if Chris is about done. We'll finish this row and go empty out that wheat.
Alright, so we're in field 10, which we don't own, but we're helping the owner picking up this straw that got left in this field. And yes, I've got the little, um, verge mowing rig here. Massey Ferguson with the small pottinger forage wagon. What I'm going to do is, uh, pick up a little bit of straw. to fill up what we've been using on the animals just really simply because we have it then we'll probably take another uh, forge wagon load and put it in the mixed ration plan so off we go to the green store Back at our straw collecting for this second small forge wagon load. And looking at these straw swaths, they seem awful wide to me. It may be worth our time to bring the wind rower up here and kind of get them narrow and straight so we don't have so much problem collecting all of this. I think that might be a good idea. Let's see about doing that. So off to the mixing plant with this load of straw. Well, I don't know what kind of helpers the old man had in this field, but uh, these straw swaths are about as crooked as the day is long. Like somebody was drunk when they cut this field. But they look a lot better when they're rolled up, so I guess it was worth coming up here with the wind rower and doing this. Keep at it, get her finished. Field 10, finish collecting up all the straw out of this field for the old boy who owns it. And we use the crone. Uh, easy flow head on a class Jaguar forage harvester coupled to a horse chaser wagon and then our truck is the new Kenworth T800 that I just bought connected to our two Australian road train trailers haven't driven it full yet but uh, preparing to once we get all these things cleared out and we'll see how it works on uh, hauling this much chaff around I'm hoping it does a lot better than the Western Star and the Mack truck well we've got the International Transstar, the nice one, and our flatbed equipment trailer. Trying to take the Class Jaguar and the Chaser Wagon down to Field 4. And uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit too long of a rig to fit on this trailer. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Oh, oh, and now it's tipping over. Ooh. and falling off too well I think we're gonna have to stop and fix that okay let me see make sure I've got it attached oh well it did raise all the way up Huh, this may get interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. 
Yeah, I think we're going to have to fix this again. All right. Got all that equipment loaded onto the flatbed here. And I think I picked probably the worst road to try to drive a large load like that down. Uh, I think it's staying on. I see a, a tire back there. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the uh, the footage of my little accidents in or not, but uh, it wasn't real easy to uh, figure out how to load all this so it fit on the trailer without falling off on the trip. Nope, I think we may have lost something back there. Oh no, it all stayed on. So let's see what we have here. The horse, chaser wagon, and the Class Jaguar both got to field four okay. Well, for the most part. You're looking at the meat smoker. And Chris has got a few racks of ribs in here smoking away. Ricky found himself half a pig that he's dressed with some Filipino spices. And it smells pretty good over here. But it reminds me that we need to take some pigs down to the market this afternoon. Here at the pig shed, we're getting our legal trailer all set up. Get back into their barn here. Get things loaded up. Take them down to the market. See how far we've got to get in here to load our pigs. There we go. Maybe. One wanted to jump in there. Maybe I need to back in a little straighter. I think we've got quite a few pigs. Maybe over 20? I did not take them down when we took the cattle here the other day. We'll fold the trailer up and uh, see you all down at the market. Okay, pulling up to the market. Sell the piggies. We'll uncover them. Start getting the ramp uh, lowered. See how much money we get for piggies. Always interested to see how much some of these things bring money wise. That was $12,480 for the piggies. Now I think we'll stop at the market. Or the grocery store, I guess. 
can sell eggs while we're down here. The chickens were kind of keeping for personal use here on Hobbs Farm. Using the eggs for cooking and breakfast and just any excess were over here at the store selling. So we got $238 for eggs today. All right, here at the junkyard next to the garden center and yeah we're going to get rid of the old mine all trailer and the shabby looking Transtar we were hauling it around with kind of figured it was uh, Time to upgrade to something to haul uh, our biofuel around with, since I was getting so much trouble from people about it. All right, so those two are off to the junkyard. All right, just pulling into the area of the biofuel plant. And we've got the Schmitz Cargo Bowl with the last of the canola we have right now. Hopefully we've got another canola crop on the way. But we're going to take them this, which ought to last them for a little while. Also getting ready for a big barley harvest in the big 84 acre field. Unload. All right, there we go. Well, we probably ought to take fuel uh, down to one of the gas stations and supply our customers there. Okay, driving back to the farm from... Uh, the biofuel plant. I got Johnny following me in the Ford pickup. Just in farming simulator terms, I'm starting to use the follow me mod. Because I've got a couple of ideas of using it for our harvest. Just starting to get a little familiar with it. take this uh, gravel road back to the paved road see if Johnny stayed with us yeah all right so we'll see y'all back at the farm we're down here by the refinery and I did end up uh, buying a brand new fuel trailer this is a Flegel brand and we've got the International Transstar, the nice one, to tow it around down here. So we'll see how this rig works for our fuel operation. And I'm kind of finishing up the day here in Field 1. Uh, the wind rowing, the straw swaths worked so well in Field 10 when we did it that... Uh, I'm doing it in field one, and probably the next video we'll be collecting the straw as chaff, but we're going to probably do it a little bit different than we've been, uh, maybe using the follow me mod. 